Welcome back to DXB Today, and we are talking about the top secrets of how to have a successful leadership mindset. And our next guest is an executive coach who is helping individuals overcome barriers and achieve their full potential to truly thrive in corporate settings. So please welcome to the show, Marissa Kamal. Welcome, Marissa. Thank you so much for having me. A an absolute pleasure of ours. Now, your, your story is quite interesting. Marissa, so to take you back, I mean, you had a high-flying corporate job. You were the COO of HSBC MENA, and, and then things kind of changed and pivoted for you. So, so talk to us about that. Yeah, that's right. So I've been in finance for a number of, year, number of years, lived all over the world, and most recently here in the UAE. Um, yeah, loved working life here. Uh, had a baby, had some pretty life-changing events after that. Um, yeah, life-threatening uh, illness that nearly got me. And it just sort of made me reevaluate my life. And I thought, what am I here to do? And I just figured I, yeah, really want to help people, help particularly female and diversity leaders. Yeah, just be, just be better and reach the top as well. I love that. So when we talk about a CEO mindset, I think we all have an idea of what it means, but what does it mean to you? What it means to me is, there's a couple of things. I think the first is, um, yeah, just the get up and go every day and just build those habits. But more importantly for me, it's all about like emotional intelligence. So we've moved away from that kind of old school authoritarian leadership. And now we're moving into the world of emotionally in emotional intelligence. And, you know, how do you do that and just harness the power of your team to deliver bundles of commercial performance as well. Mm. So I had a question. Uh, when it comes to the line of work that you do, is there anything that you do within the community, peer groups, discussions, and how do you get involved with them? Yeah, there is. So um, I actually run CEO peer groups. And what that involves is I bring CEOs from different uh, diverse sectors together and we come together on a monthly basis for four hours a month um, and we really help each other resolve issues, opportunities and challenges. And it's amazing for me because, you know, I'm CEO of my own consultancy company, but to be surrounded by all those experts together and really see other people and entrepreneurs build their businesses and just the power of diversity of thought in the room is, is incredible. Now, since you brought up diversity, let's talk a little bit about that. How helpful is it in a team to have this diversity, especially as a CEO, how important is it for you to have that diverse team? Yeah, so it's incredibly important. There's loads of statistics uh, around this, and particularly uh, McKinsey do loads of work in the space. And it's something like diverse leadership teams are 40% more likely to be double as profitable as those that aren't. Um, but outside of the stats, you know, the reason for that is we all have very different backgrounds and very different beliefs and very different journeys. And if you have a team that is diverse and you listen to that team, then you're more likely to build innovative products. You're more likely to be listening to your customers and therefore you're more likely to boost commercial performance. Um, but ultimately as well, have a, have a happy, welcoming culture, which is incredibly important as well. With your inspiring story of kind of taking that leap of faith, albeit, you know, a, an, an illness and a pivotal and life-changing having a baby, there are many out there that are currently in corporate jobs that are afraid to take that leap of faith uh, and wanting to do something completely different to what they're doing on a daily basis. What advice do you have for these people as well? Yeah, so it's, I think when people look at um, my journey, some might say, oh, you just left corporate and then you jumped into this business and, and now you have your own thing and it's going really well. It's really difficult, you know, like you have to dig deep on a daily basis and you, and you look at people and you think they're successful, but a lot has gone into that. And I think it's like hard, there's this whole thing around hard work versus talent. And you know, if I take Michael Jordan as an example, on the off season, he's shooting 500 to 1,000 basketballs a day. So there's that, I think, is the, the real mindset and the real kind of, yeah, you've got to dig deep and you've got to go for it. It's not easy. So if you want to leave the, the safety net of the corporate and, and the money that comes with it, then you've just got to have that in mind and really, really just go for it. What, if, what about people who don't want to go for it? Let's say somebody never had a dream of being an entrepreneur, being a CEO. Can they still benefit from having a CEO mindset? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's the, you know, for me, it's not even CEO mindset, it's leadership more broadly. And that can mean, it doesn't mean that you have to have a team. You know, you as an individual, you impact like hundreds of people's lives every year. So for me, that kind of piece around empathetic leadership and, you know, how so self-aware you are and how like emotionally aware you are and just how you like support people around you. And I, I think that pays dividends, whether it's from a commercial perspective or just that kind of emotional good feeling that comes with it. So. Yeah, it's not just about CEOs, it's, it's for everyone. Mm. I touched on this earlier a bit with Salah, which was, you know, the personal, professional kind of approach when it comes mm. to leadership. I think COVID was a very interesting time. I think that's when we all realized there is no such thing as compartmentalizing the two. They both coexist together. Talk to me about how important empathy is as a leader and that approach to your team and, and empathy to yourself as well. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, COVID kind of shone a light on it. And I think that now in the world that we live in, it, you know, we're working cross jurisdiction, it's remote, we're in the office. It's so important to be emotionally aware. And for me, that is, it might not come so naturally to you, right? So you might not be the most, I guess, emotionally intelligent person, but it's, you can build it in. Mm -hmm. You can really check in with people to see how they are. And if people feel loved and wanted and valued in an organization, then then they'll perform as well. So yeah, for, you know, it's just so important in this mm -hmm. day and age, ever more so today than it was, you know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Marissa, we really appreciate your insights. I'm sure they're very fortunate people to have you as their coach. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us on the show today. But we are gonna turn the spotlight on to Saleh and Fares. That's Fares. right, we've got DXB in 60. Have you been warned about this? No, I have not. <laughs> Don't worry, it used to be a quiz where you could be right or wrong, but now it's just questions about you. We're gonna get to know as much about you in 60 seconds as possible. Game right? On. We're gonna start the clock in three, two, one. Uh, if you weren't an entrepreneur, what would you be doing, do you think? I think I would be a baker. Love that for you. Uh, your motto in life and in work? Go after it, no matter what anyone says. Love that. Uh, a superpower that you wish you had? Teleportation. Great one. An unexpected thing you've learned when becoming an entrepreneur? An ex an ex sorry. An, an unexpected thing that you learned becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, that I'm stronger than I thought I was. Mm. Love that. Uh, what was your first job ever? I was a uh, assistant in the grocery store at my student, uh, in the student union in my university in Essex. Uh, what's the last app that you used on your phone before walking onto the studio? Instagram. Instagram, <laughs> definitely. Uh, your go-to restaurant in Dubai, is it one of yours? My own. <laughs> what can't be, hands down. <laughs> uh, if you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, no, I would definitely have the one with uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. And uh, finally, why Dubai? Why not? Mm. Love that. Why not? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Salah, I want to thank you for being here as our guest co host. We've thoroughly enjoyed having you, you here. So, so we hope to see you back. And Marissa, thank you once again for your time. Now, Coming up, we do have a performance in the studio. Of course we do. Uh, we have Alina who's going to be here just closing the night for us with an epic performance. You do not want to miss it.